Hey guys, welcome to Juicy Tea, where I read out the best stories on Reddit so you don't have to. The funny, shocking, and satisfyingly juicy. Today's Bridezilla Saturday, with the craziest wedding stories from across Reddit. Our first post comes from the Am I the A-hole subreddit, posted by Am I the A-hole Wedding Dress CU. Am I the asshole for cutting up and altering my wedding dress into a more functional dress, instead of giving it to my sister, who can't afford it? So, I was supposed to get married two months ago to my ex-partner of five years. Sadly, we broke it off because he cheated on me at his bachelor party with a stripper. I had this beautiful dress that cost me around $2,000 out of my pocket. I had been very depressed since everything happened because it felt like it was somehow my fault for not being sexy enough or not giving him what he wanted. So, last weekend, I decided to take my power back and I began by altering the dress. I've been sewing for 15 years and I know what I'm doing. I cut it and changed the colour and after a week of work I had a beautiful gown that I could use for more stuff. I then uploaded a picture of the dress to Instagram with a caption that said something like you can change the worst memories. My sister hits me up and asks me if that was my old wedding dress and I told her yes. She then called me and asked why I'd done this. I asked her why it was such a big deal and she told me that I could have waited until after the wedding. I was so confused. Then she reminded me that when we were staying at the hotel where my wedding was supposed to happen, my mum and my sister were there cheering me up and my sister said something like, oh well, if you're not using it, I will. We all laughed so I thought it was a joke. It was never brought up again, but she did ask me once what the material was, so I assume she wanted to use something similar. Now my sister is mad at me, and my mum says she understands my point of view, but that I could have waited five more months until after a wedding to take my power back. So, am I the a-hole? The reason you guys laughed when she said that is because it's insane. Of course he thought it was a joke. Edit. What the F is wrong with some of you? Suddenly I'm the a-hole for leaving my ex for cheating on me? That it doesn't count because it was at his bachelor party? Do you know how relationships work? Are you also going to tell me that if he cheated on a Saturday that it wouldn't count? Or if he left the country? This is hilarious coming from a sub that says cheaters are the worst people in this world. Cheating is cheating, period. Update. So after being assured that I did nothing wrong, I decided to talk it out with my sister. So I tried calling her, but she'd blocked my number. I was very confused and talked to my mother. She was still trying to stay out of it and I got a little mad and said it's not fair that my sister was not right because she never formally asked me and how was I supposed to just guess that she wanted it? She tried to justify her, but in the end also accepted that my sister was wrong. Nevertheless, she told me to give her space and that she'll just come to terms with it herself. I waited a few days till I met her at a supermarket. At first she tried to act like she didn't see me, but I planted myself in front of her. She was just rolling her eyes, saying she had places to be. So I just said, you know, I hope you notice how unfair you're treating me, and then I left her alone. That night, I received a call where I was berated for being selfish for about 20 minutes by her. I asked her if she was done and asked her if we could talk about it like adults. She came over the next night and we had an exhausting fight, screaming, crying and after all was said and done, she actually apologised for everything. She was kind of jealous of my dress and the wedding I almost had. And she was embarrassed that she couldn't afford everything I could and she felt like she'd failed as an adult and as a mother. And honestly, I get it. Not because I think she's a failure, but because I get how it feels when your brain tells you you failed at life because you don't have things that other people have. She apologised also because she was trying to blame me for her problems and that everything was easier if she wasn't the one to blame. We talked a lot more till I told her she doesn't need a fancy dress and that we could search for something more basic and I could help her decorate it. She agreed and we actually did get to customise a very basic gown. As we didn't have much time, it's not super fancy. Sadly, due to the outbreak, the wedding that was supposed to happen this month was cancelled.
They had a courthouse wedding where she wore one of my dresses. But they'll be celebrating in August if it's possible. That's everything. So even if I wasn't the gay hole and my sister seemed like a brat, she was dealing with some heavy feelings and I still love her. Thanks for the judgement and advice. Our next post comes from the Am I the A-hole subreddit. Posted by Reading Chemicals 6240. Am I the A-hole for refusing to pay for my fiancé's parents to come to our wedding, even though I am paying for my parents? My fiancé wanted a destination wedding. She comes from money. I didn't carry the way, but I was going to cover my family's expenses anyway, since I don't come from money. My fiancé would also like to do the same for her family. I said sure, she's free to do as she pleases, but I would not help as they have the means to cover their own expenses and this destination wedding was 100% her idea. I'm covering half of the cost since my parents could not afford to do so. My fiancé is annoyed with me. I spoke with my friend about this and my man told me that this is a huge red flag. I know that Am I the A-hole subreddit is not afraid to rip a person a new a-hole, so am I the a-hole? Should I pay for her family's expenses since I did the same for my family? even though they have the means to do so. Update. Thank you so much for the feedback and insight. I can be somewhat ignorant of social norms and can be seen as a doormat. I spoke in detail with my friend, who is also my best man, and he echoed many of the same points brought up here. She's claiming our money before we're married, and she's looking for equality, not equity, which does not make sense. He's also afraid that since I make more than her, around four times more, and I also have higher earning potential, she might be trying to plant the seeds of being a trophy wife. This thread and my friend gave me much to talk about and will be doing so tonight. Many of the concerns my friend brought up are topics I don't want to talk about, but I know I have to. He suspects some level of feeling that my family's not good enough or something may be at play. Everyone has given me something to think about and I appreciate it. Final update. I brought up my concerns with my fiancé and it appears her concern is about the perception of me going above and beyond for my family, while treating her family like they don't matter because they have money. In her eyes, I'm treating her family differently because of their wealth and that's not fair in her eyes. I brought up the fact that the destination wedding was not my idea, it was 100% something she wanted. I went along with it because I have the means to cover my family's expenses so they can still come. When I said, why don't we just do something more economical, she still doubled down that the proper thing to do would be to cover her family and it would be greatly appreciated. I did tell her I was confused. Her father alone makes more than me. He does not need my money. She just went on to say that it's not about need, but what's fair and to show my gratitude. I told her, gratitude for what? I'm paying for half and on top of half, you want me to pay for their expenses. If the accommodation I arrange does not meet their standards, they'll probably just upgrade and think I'm cheap or something. I tried to explain that fair does not mean equal, but that went over her head. After about a solid 4 hour conversation, I suggested we postpone the wedding for now and talk things out with a counsellor. I also brought up that I'm considering getting a prenup just to protect myself. She did not like that idea. I just explained that if we don't divorce or anything, then the prenup is just a useless piece of paper. Has nothing to do with trust, it's just a protective measure. I also recommended she should get one herself. Protect yourself, you never know what the future might hold. She was slightly miffed, so as it stands, we'll be going to counselling. I'd rather bring up the question, is she embarrassed by family or something, with a third party present. Thanks again, Reddit. And our last post comes from the Emma the Airhol subreddit. Posted by Throwaway Bride Throw. Am I the a hole for refusing to let my and my fiance's best friend propose at our wedding? For some context, I, female 26, met my fiance, male 26, in college, along with our two best friends. We'll call them John, male 26, and Holly, female 26. They've also been together since college, like me and my fiance. So we've been inseparable ever since, going on double dates and trips together and have had an amazing time post-college. My fiancé proposed to me last year, and it's all been very exciting. Wedding planning has been stressful and exciting. Holly's my bridesmaid, and John is my fiancé's best man. Our wedding is February next year. In the midst of planning last night, John came over to our house, and said that he wanted to propose to Holly. 
Me and my fiancé were over the moon for him and I was so excited for another wedding. I asked him when he planned to propose and that we'd be down to help with the proposal and everything. He smiled and said that he was thankful and that he'd love to propose to Holly at our wedding. Before I said anything, he showed me a video of a bride giving a bridesmaid her bouquet instead of tossing it and then the man proposing. He said that he'd love to do something like this. I was sort of speechless, as was my fiancé, so he asked us, would that be okay? I took a deep breath and said, no John, it wouldn't be okay. As much as I love you and Holly and I'm happy that you're getting engaged, I don't want it done at my wedding. But I'd be more than happy to help you plan a separate event and I don't think Holly would be too thrilled with getting proposed to at someone else's wedding. Holly has told me before that she found people getting engaged at people's weddings to be tacky. I told him that, but he wouldn't budge. He got angry and said that we're being selfish for not allowing him this one small favour and if the roles were reversed, he'd be okay with it in a heartbeat. I reiterated to him that Holly wouldn't want this. She'd want her own event. He kept saying, you're lying. You just don't want us to be engaged and you want all the attention on yourselves. This is where I feel like I may be the a-hole. I blew up at him and called him tacky and cheap. I said, us and our families aren't shelling out thousands for you to propose at our wedding. It's embarrassing. You can propose to Holly the day after, the day before, or even the day of, just not at my wedding or venue. Holly will cringe and find it embarrassing. He said he didn't think he'd been friends with such selfish and rude people for all these years. My fiancé reiterated everything I said and then told him to leave and he left. Now it's awkward. Holly has no idea what happened and we all had a trip booked for next month and now I don't want to go. I'm very upset with John and he hasn't apologised. I don't know what to tell Holly. I don't want to lie to her but I also don't want to ruin the surprise of her proposal. A part of me feels bad but I want to stick to my guns. Update. John came over again and apologised profusely. He apologised for the name calling and said he was bummed out because his idea, which he thought was a good one because of all the videos he'd seen, had been shut down. He said he should have listened to me when I told him that Holly had said before that she finds those types of proposals tacky. He said he should have taken no as an answer and there was absolutely no excuse for the way he spoke to us and he would understand if we no longer wanted him at the wedding. He said he was angry with himself at possibly losing our friendships over an idea that had no pros to it whatsoever. He also said that Holly deserves her own moment and he'd love my help with the planning if I was still open to it. I did tell John I didn't want the stress of him possibly hijacking our wedding because of how he reacted when we said no. He said he would never do that and he decided to propose to Holly on the trip or during the holidays. He'll let me know so I can help, which I'm happy to do. He said that it's our wedding and he was crazy and apologised for calling us selfish when it's our day. Me and my fiancé did accept his apology. We had a conversation after the argument and agreed that if John apologised, we'd accept. Also, we've never had a disagreement of this scale before. We've always gotten along for all these years. I don't think it's worth burning bridges with John as he's apologised and he's a genuinely kind and an amazing friend. This is just a weird blip. Thank you all so much for the comments and judgments. Remember, I post new content every day, so subscribe for more juicy tea.